Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the author interaction organized as a part of the NLF Reading Challenge 2021. My name is Kartika. I'm the head of reading at Neve Academy. We're very excited to be here, and we hope you are too. The NLF Reading Challenge is a six month long reading event from January to June 2021 for students between 10 to 13 years of age. It is open for participants to take part on the competitive or the non competitive tracks. We have students from across India participating in the challenge. In addition to fun book-based activities and regular author interactions, the challenge will conclude with a quiz competition that will see the three best teams win gold, silver, and bronze in grave trophies respectively, certificates of achievement, and a great set of books. Before we dive into the interaction, we would just like to point out to our audience that as this is a webinar, we will not be able to respond if you raise your virtual hand. Please do type your questions in the Q&A box. If you have your questions ready, please feel free to share them with us and we'll share them with the author in the Q&A segment. Today, we have with us a very special guest, the award-winning author, Paru Anand, whose book, Being Gandhi, most of us have read. Paru Anand is a Sahitya Academy Bal Sahitya Award winner for her book, Wild Child, which is now published as Like Smoke, with additional content. She has written books for children, young adults and adults. Paru also works with children, especially those in difficult circumstances, through her program, Literature and Action. In the past, she has been invited to speak at the Harvard India Conference, USA, and has also headed the National Center for Children's Literature. Paru Anand was awarded the Kalinga Karubaki Literary Award for Fearless Women Writers in 2019. Welcome, Paru. We're very happy to have you with us today. Hi, Kartika. Thank you so much. And thank you, as always, Neve. I love being at Neve. Thank you so much, Paru. It's a pleasure and a privilege for us to be interacting with you. Thank you. We know that you'll be doing a short reading from your book, but before we get started, we thought we would just let our audience know that Paru Anand launched Being Gandhi at the Neve Literature Festival in September 2019. The launch event was done by the students of the school. Here's Paru posing with one of the students from that time. And here's a picture of the autographed copy of the book with words from Paru and a cute little illustration of Mahatma Gandhi by the illustrator Priya Kurian. We had a lot of fun and lots of memories from that event. Um, mm. And now I leave it to Paro to create new memories for us. Over to you, Paro. Thank you. Um, and once again, Neve, you really um, created such a wonderful platform for us writers, creators of children's literature to, um, to talk about and reach out and meet with um, people like you from all over India. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of reading from Being Gandhi. But before I do that, I just want to say that when I first was asked by my friend, Tina Naran, the editor at HarperCollins, uh, and she said, Paro, please, can you write a book on, uh, on Gandhi? And I said, no, because I really felt, what else is there to say about Gandhi? Um, and I uh, and and also that um, you know he was Gandhi to me was like textbook dry um, and just such a holy god of a person that I couldn't connect with him at all. But Tina Naran can you know sort of persisted and she said you've got to do it. And so I started reading more and more about Gandhi. And of course, I remember that my father uh, had written a book on Gandhi and I read that, which was called A Sage in Revolt, the sage Gandhi and how, a sa how can a sage be in revolt? And that's when I discovered Gandhi. Not only that, I also discovered how in a way easy, at least possible, and how very important it is to be Gandhi. But when I go to students or children anywhere, 
uh, especially if they know my work and I say, okay, today I'm going to talk to you about Gandhi. And they're like, eh, I'm boring. <laughs> sort of leaning back away saying, ah, that's really boring. But then I start the first chapter. And the name of the first chapter is, my life sucks, just sucks. And they're like, eh, a book on Gandhi, which starts with my life sucks. Just suck. And I know I've drawn them in. Pretty ma'am, she is nice and everything, but you've got to admit she's one of the most boring teachers on earth. I mean, like the planet would be so much better if there were not so many pretty ma'ams in children's lives. It's like it's like a necessary qualification. In an interview, a potential teacher gets asked, are you boring? No, 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 I'm a very interesting person. In fact, I have a wonderful sense of humor, I've been told. Eh, wrong answer, out, next. If you're not boring, you can't be a teacher. Looks like that. But Preeti Ma'am, she kind of takes the Dullsville cake she could well be the queen of Boringistan with where she rules with dead fan face and monotone voice. I start drawing her and her legendary Dullsville Boringistan. And these are lovely illustrations by Priya Kurian, a wonderful, wonderful illustrator. So, Actually, I want to be drawing comics and graphic novels, but till then I'm stuck and shoved and locked into school with boring teachers like Preeti Ma'am. And I keep, I start drawing and embellishing boring Istan. Everyone's head droops and shoulders slouch. I love drawing, but I'm not allowed to draw. I pencil in dying trees. I draw kuttas and billies who are fast asleep because there's nothing for them to bark at. Ouch! Oh, what? Someone's pinched my ear. I raise my hand to wallop them back, but draw it back as the whole class gasps. <gasps> Of course, it's Preeti Ma'am. And of course, she snatched my page away and is examining it. But of course, she can't understand what I've drawn or see any sense of humor in it. Of course not. She's the queen bee of boring Istan. Tell me what you want to do for your project. Blank. I don't know what she's talking about. I wasn't listening. I was drawing. Answer me, she snaps. Uh, I'm rooting around, grabbing. Uh, Ma'am, I think this will require some thought. Um, shall I give you some ideas tomorrow? She smirks. She catches hold of my ear. She knows I know nothing. And she drags me to the library and makes me borrow a stack of Gandhi books. You are going to have to be Gandhi for a day. No, no, wait, Chandrasekhar. I am going to make you be Gandhi for a whole week. Eh? Be who? Gandhi, you know, Mahatma Gandhi, father of the nation. I know, ma'am, but how can I be Gandhi? I mean, there are no Britishers to throw out. Oh, unless you mean the foreign exchange students, shall we throw them out? I laugh. She doesn't. Of course, she doesn't have a sense of humor. Well, her bright project is that all of us have to be Gandhi for a day. I mean, anything that we do, we have to think, what would Gandhiji have done? And I think, I'm not going to do this project. I'm not going to read these books. I'm going to just chuck them on my 
bed or under the bed rather and i'm not going to read them i'm not going to do it i'll write some bakwas about some old auntie ji who i helped and all that i'm not doing it no way and i come home but then something happens that shakes up the whole country indira gandhi the prime minister of india is assassinated by her sick bodyguards i'm sure you know about that incident in our history and in retaliation thousands and thousands of sick people are being slaughtered their homes burned their lives destroyed and there's curfew in the city and i'm at home and the tv is blaring loud and images of flames and burning taxis and people running and indira gandhi's uh, you know body being taken from the hospital and i feel as though i'm growing up again aging as though my life is in fast forward the television volume has finally been turned down but the fire cannot be controlled with the tap of a button the embers are catching and the flames are fast going out of control it's then that the shouting from outside seems to come closer we all turn to the tv to see if someone has turned the volume back up but no no one has the sounds are not out of a box they are outside our door at first the shouts are confusing but pretty soon the words separate enough for us to make out what the crowd outside wants blood the mob is baying for blood my own blood runs cold I freeze. Ma is the one who moves first. She runs to the front door and is locking every lock and then she is trying to push the sofa up against the door so that when and if they break in there'll be something to stop the mob. She turns to my father, "Help me, help me." But he's standing there. He's not moving. And he shakes his head. It's not for us he says it's not for us and like a jigsaw everything falls into place in that moment as though i can see through the door they've not come for us they've come to uncle sarab's house ma what will they do to him ma sobs come tumbling out Ma, what about Kiran and Sharan? Are they going to be okay? At least let's try and help them. They're just children. They're my friends. But we can't do anything. The sounds of cutting and breaking and smashing and screams are bouncing through the door at us. With every cry for help knocking at our door. we lose a little piece of ourselves and i know now that when something like this happens it happens to me i go to my room and i find the books on gandhi that have been thrown there on the bed the ones i had promised not to read promised myself not to read I pick one up and open it randomly and it says in a gentle way you can shake the world Gandhi's words in a gentle way you can shake this world and then another one peace and revolution are not mutually exclusive a shiver runs through me and i think if gandhi 
was not the great Mahatma, the father of the nation, but a 12 year old boy. And this was happening. The things that are happening here today. What would he do? Another shiver down my spine. And I wonder, can I be Gandhi? Can I? Can you be Gandhi? Thank you, Farul. That was a very impactful reading and performance of the text from the book. Thank you so much. Thank you. In fact, through the course of your narration, you've answered some of the questions that have come in from our audience. Um, we have Joyce who's asked, what is your inspiration along with Anaya Kanchan? And you've touched upon that. You've talked about the fact that Tina Narang uh, was the person who asked you to write about Gandhi. Um, but you know what, what did inspire me was how not to teach Gandhi. Because we've really dried him out and stuck him into textbooks. We've hardened him up and made him into stone statues. And we've put him on high pedestals, so high that we can't reach. But Gandhi was not always the Mahatma. He was an ordinary little child who grew to become that. And if he could, one man who shook an empire, a pinch of salt that brought down a uh, an imperialist force, then can't you, can't I? So that was my inspiration. Thanks, Paro. It actually answers Rhea Merotra's question, who says, why did you need to tell the story of Gandhi and relevance through a child's voice? And you've just said that it makes him more relatable and makes yeah, your readers. I, I, I don't think he was a god. He was a flawed human being. But through those flaws, he found bits within himself which we all have, each of us have those, those pieces within ourselves. Those times when we rage, when you see a puppy being hit or a, um, you know, a, 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 a beggar who is crying on the road or a bully in your school troubling some kid and something inside you rages, let it out, do it, you know. What I say is, think it, feel it, do it. Yeah, so that. Nice. Absolutely. Rhea Mehrotra has a follow-up question for you, Paru, which connects Gandhi with our, the events that we're living through today. Um, her question is, don't you think that with all that's happened recently, this book needs to be revisited, especially with the farmer protests, the government's approach, the pandemic, we will always need Gandhi that way. Yep. Um, I have written a book which is going into press the coming week, uh, which has that idea of being more proactive in your life. Uh, there will always be wrongs being done. Uh, there will always be um, those who couldn't care less. You have to decide whether you want to do something about it or not. The mass migrations, the, the people fleeing our cities uh, and walking miles and miles, not knowing if they were, to, if they were going to reach. Um, so my stories revolve around uh, that, that time. And yes, I think this, unfortunately, is going to be a story that is going to need to be revisited time and time again. And so that is why I feel that it's not just a story. It's not just one man, it's a call to action. And I think that, you know, since writing this book, um, I've really felt that books are a call to action and not, not just a story, not always just a story. Yeah, of course, a, a fun story, a light story. I'm, I'm, I'm not dissing those at all, but a story that then mm, tells you 
go ahead from here do more do better find pieces of yourself inside you which ties in with what you just said ties in with what anaya kanchan from neve academy has asked saying uh, what is the message that you want to spread with this book you just mentioned that yeah thanks anaya that is a great question and you know i have always hated messagey books uh which is why i wanted to start out with this kid who was like thousands of children out there right a kid who was like me who say ah everything's boring ah, i hate studies oh my life is you know like every pimple was the end of the world um i thought people had nothing better to do than to look at the zit on my face and think oh god how ugly or oh, how short and all that and then you know the world is much bigger than the zit on my face um and needs to be seen like that that's an interesting way of looking at it we have a, an interesting question from tasmia pasha paru who says who talks about your choice of gandhi as a figure to write about which you've spoken about um would you want to consider writing about other freedom fighters in a similar manner you know i had written um a television serial when i first started writing a television serial called uh, freedom's children uh which was uh, about children who were involved in the freedom struggle not the great leaders not the big names who we all study about uh but the um the kids who were involved and i got that idea from my mother in law who was actually part of a singing squad and she was also uh part of this group uh they used to carry messages and children were asked to carry the messages and were told that in case you are stopped by a cop uh eat the message swallow it and she says pata nahi kitne maine messages kha liye aur logo ko pata hi nahi chala and i thought that's so interesting like she was 10 11 years old and so i started researching more and i actually wrote a television serial about children or young people who were involved in the freedom struggle but sadly that didn't never did see the light of day perhaps then a book on it yeah i have to look at those notes again on that note paro maybe you could tell us and we were talking about this before we started about your writing in the course of the lockdown um if you could tell us what what lies in store what lies ahead what can yeah. we look forward to you know i think the lockdown for some writers has perhaps not made such a big difference as it has for others because it's such a solitary activity it's such a lockdown activity in any case for me i had the additional um impetus uh i was on a fellowship it's called uh, the takshila srijan peet uh which where they were going to publish uh what i was writing and then lockdown happened and the pandemic happened and everything um and i had three grandsons so i wasn't traveling and anything like that but um so i just wrote so i have two picture books one called ruru which is a bilingual book and one is called babies in my heart or dil mein bachcha hai ji uh, i also so these are coming out from takshila um uh, and from this region peet I also have a a collection of short stories and I'm going to reveal since I've done so many launches at Neve um I'm going to reveal the name here it's called Unmasked um and it has a fabulous cover again by Priya Kurian beautiful cover the roughs have just come in and um uh, so there's Unmasked and then I've also done quite a lot of writing done a lot of zooming um and i and as kartika and i were talking it's also actually in a way been very freeing 
because the kind of people we've managed to meet, the kind of places we've managed to go, you know, so you're not thinking outside the box, but we are again thinking inside the box, but in different ways. So I was on a panel where I was talking about um, no, Nomad's Land, where I was with an Icelandic person, with uh, uh, someone from the West Indies, someone from a, a Cherokee Indian, a Romanian gypsy, and we were all on a common platform together. Uh, talking about belonging and the place you belong to and your roots. And we were scattered all over the world. It was very inspiring. And um, you also have had a very intimate look into an author's life. Um, for instance, I was doing a session with Anthony Horowitz. And uh, because his wife had a Zoom call, so she was using their study. And so he uh, he did his call from his bedroom, and his bed is a very interesting bed with four trees. You know, it's a four poster bed, but there are trees instead of just uh, you know whatever those pieces of wood. So there are actually whole trees there, very interesting. And he wouldn't get that if it wasn't in the pandemic. So silver lining, what can I say? Absolutely, I remember logging in for that session and listening to both of you talk and. The background was quite dramatic. It was quite a sight to see. Uh, of course, a lovely conversation as well. Thank you. So before we, I know we have about three minutes to wind up, Paro. You have a lot of compliments that you've received on your reading. Um, uh -huh. Anuar says, I, I love the way you're reading. Jyoti Narayan says, such an animated reading. So glad I joined the session. Mohammed Rayan says, the session is superb and it's interesting. And Achna Kumari says, she likes your style of telling a story. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I know one of the questions that gets asked a lot, and it gets asked at me a lot, is that I want to be a writer, and you know, what tips can you give? Two tips. One, to be a writer, you've got to be a reader. You cannot be a writer without that. And my second tip is just sit down and write. Don't look for perfect anything. In between everything, life goes on, lockdown goes on, pandemic goes on, whatever, whatever, even then sit down and just write. And my secret formula is BIC, which is bottom in chair, put your bottom into your chair, get writing, set yourself even 15 minutes a day to write and just write. And do read, reading challenge, how wonderful is that? I'm so happy that you're doing that. Thanks, Parav. We just, there's one final standard question that we ask all our writers. Uh, and because you've talked about reading and writing, we thought we would ask you this. If you could have a shelf of books that you've read that have made you who you are today, what would be on the shelf? Ah, Born Free. Born Free by Joy Adams about a lioness because I was a rotten reader. I just didn't read at all. My family though, we had this one hour where we sat together and read in the evening. And to me, it was a complete waste of time. And then I found this book, Born Free, and it changed my life. From then I could read uh, and uh, read endlessly. So that was one. Um, I think more recently it's Harry Potter, which has been uh, so life-changing for me because all the things that I was being told by publishers that my stories were too complex, my, my um, themes too difficult for young people, that I needed to be lighter, I needed whatever, whatever. Uh, J.K. Rowling just smashed all those beliefs. Uh, so that has been very inspiring. I would definitely have her there. Um, and uh, ah, what else? I would have um, a book called um, Angela's Ashes. Very moving. Boy, the boy in uh, the the boy in striped pajamas. Uh, I love that. I would definitely have some Ruskin Bond there. And I would have a book which sadly you won't be able to get anymore. It's called The True Adventures of Prince Teen Tang, 
which is a prince who's born with three legs. Wonderful book by Kalpana Swaminathan, sadly out of print. But <laughs> yeah, I, I have one copy language in there. And I would have all my books together, which I've never managed to do, is to get all my books together onto one shelf. Because uh, every time I put them together, somebody wants something, somebody wants something, and off they go. Thank you so much, Paro. If ever we visit you, then we would request if you can bring that copy of Adventures of Teen Town so that all of us can get a chance to see it and read it. Thank you so much. This has been an illuminating session for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Neil. As always, Kavita, big, 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 big thanks. Thanks so much, Paro. That was our interaction with Paro Anand. Um, I'm sure all of you had as good a time as we did. What we are going to do now is we are staying back to talk, talk to the contestants and the participants of the NLF Reading Challenge 2021. Um, we hope that you've been enjoying all of the books that are on the reading list for March. Uh, what we are going to do now is we'd like to sort of get an idea of what you thought of the books that you read in March. And for that, I will ask and request my colleagues to share their screen with a list of all the books from March uh, for all of us to see. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to hear from you on what were your favorite books. Um, so here we have Being Gandhi, Breakout, Flyway Boy, Inquisitor's Tale, We Dream of Space, My Mom, Tracy Beaker, The Golden Compass, Letter for the King, The Book of Lost Things, Stamped, The Middler, The War That Saved My Life, and Where the River Runs Gold. It's a mix of Indian and global fiction. Um, there's nonfiction in there as well. So we're curious to see what you thought was your favorite book. What we've done is we've put up a poll on a website called slido.com. If you'd like to vote and tell us what you think, if you could go and if you're logged in from a computer, if you could go to slido.com and type in this code 526592, then we'll be able to see your vote and we'll share our screen which will show your results as they come in. So I'm just going to put this on the chat box as well. The website that you need to go to is www.slido.com and you will be prompted to enter a code which is 526592 in the box next to joining as a participant. We'll share our screen, we'll share the next slide which will show us the responses that you give us about the books that you thought were your favorites from the March reading list. We already have an entry there from The War That Saved My Life as a favorite. It is a lovely book. And we do have an author interaction with the author coming up with Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Northern Lights, that's nice to see. The Inquisitor's Tale is also up there. We Dream of Space, all right, which is at 40%, all right. War That Saved My Life is running strong as a favorite at 80%. We Dream of Space is just coming in. That's lovely. Oh, we have Where the River Runs Gold, a new response, Being Gandhi. I'm glad that somebody had like Being Gandhi the most in their reading list. It must have been nice for them to listen to Paruan and talking about the book. Okay, Well, That Saved My Life continues to stay popular, stay a favorite, that's lovely to see. So we have an author interaction with Kimberly Brubaker Bradley, uh, who's the writer of The War That Saved My Life. Um, which is, which is happening on the 23rd of March, followed by an interaction with John Connolly with the Book of Lost Things, which is happening on March 24th. Before both of these, we have an interaction with June Parker Rhodes, on, who's the author of Ghost Boys, on April 16th. So that's April 16th, April 23rd, and April 24th. I apologize for getting the months wrong, but I'm sure all of you will tune in. Oh, and we, I just see the results that being Gandhi is back on top as a favorite. That's nice. Thank you, participants. Thank you for participating in that poll. We're really glad that you enjoyed your reading so much. What we'd also like to do is we have, um, 
you know, we have a lot of things happening with reading over the course of these last few months. We have books of fiction and nonfiction like we've talked about. Since January, since we launched the Reading Challenge, we've had The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind by William Kamkwamba and Brian Miller as a nonfiction book, along with Rising Water, the story of the Thai cave rescue by Mark Aronson, with whom we've had an author interaction. We've had Hidden Planet and Illustrator's Love Letter to Planet Earth by Ben Rothery, with whom we've had an interaction as well. And we have stamped Racism, Anti-Racism and You by Jason Reynolds and Ibram Kendi. So all of these educational, informative, really rich nonfiction books. What we are curious to ask is, is there anything that you've learned from these books that you didn't know before? Can you tell us one fact something new that you learned from these nonfiction books that you didn't know before. Would you be able to type it out in your chat box for us and we'll read it out. The question that we've just asked is, is there anything new that you have learned from or that you discovered from the nonfiction books on the NLF Reading Challenge? If there is, would you be able to tell us what it is that you've learned? One fact, something new that you've learned over the course of your reading. You can type it out in your chat box. We have some interesting responses coming in. We have Tasmiya Pasha who says, I really learned many courageous things from stories. We have Avya Agarwal who says, from the boy who harnessed the wind, he learned that even garbage and trash can be used to add value to many people's lives. For example, the windmill that William made. Indeed, thank you so much, Avya. We have SM Darshini who tells us, in the Hidden Planet book by the author Ben Rothley, I learned about many new facts about animals, birds, Darshini is from Parikrama. Thank you so much, Darshini. We have Avantika Banujit who says, I have learned that passion and education go hand in hand from the boy who harnessed the wind. Thank you. It's lovely that you've taken a life lesson away from the nonfiction book. Thank you. Um, we have Kiran Singh who tells us, it takes a very long time, 100 hours or more, and dedicated focus to illustrate beautiful wildlife. And this comes from Ben Rothery's book, Hidden Planet. Thank you so much, Kiran. Yes, indeed, the illustrations are very detailed and painstakingly done. And it's evident when we see it on the page. We have Jayashri who says, I learned how to be bold and courageous in our life. We have Kirat who says, I learned many things, many creative things, and also how to lead a peaceful life from being Gandhi. Thanks so much. We have Angel Vidyaraj who tells us, I have read A Long Walk to Water and it was very reasonable, made me understand how difficult it is to survive with such harsh climates and how determination could change what lies ahead for all of us? Thanks so much, Angel, for your responses. We've really enjoyed all of the nonfiction that came into the reading list um, so far in all of these months. We thought that it was nonfiction that was presented in a very interesting manner, in a way that it's not heavy and not hard for people to understand and absorb the facts. So we're so glad that you shared our enthusiasm for the nonfiction, nonfiction that's in there. On that note, um, we'd also like to talk about the reading prompt, the activity prompt that we had put out last, uh, which was for all of our participants to create a poster based on a book that they really loved. Um, and our prompt was that it had to be a poster advertising your book. And the criteria for the poster was that it had to be strong in its reasoning for why you, the reader, liked the book. It had to be well-balanced in its use of visuals and text. It had to be organized such that the information is easy to understand and pleasing to look at. We thoroughly enjoyed looking at all the entries. We are pleased to announce the winners of the activity prompt here on this session. And what we will do is we will post these out on our social media channels very shortly. 
So we have Arushi Chandra from Neva Academy Bangalore, who's one of the winners. Thank you, Arushi, for your entries. We also have Mridula, Yogesh, Monica, and Tasmia from Parikrama Center for Learning in Jayanagar, whose poster revolves around the book Fly Away Boy. Thank you so much for your creative interpretation of the themes of the book. We would also like to take this opportunity to make a special mention of the poster that was made by Munisha, Manasi, Kamal, Monica, and Vishwas from Parikrama Center for Learning, Shrikar Nagar. There's a lot of effort that's gone into this. Um, it's a very aesthetic and pleasing poster. Thank you so much for all that you have done and all the work that you've done. We're so glad that your love for these books translates so strongly into work that all of us can see. Thank you so much, everyone, for your entries and for all your work. We will share these out on our social media handles. And once they are ready, once they're published, we will let you know. All right. So we're almost at the end of our book chat for this month. Um, and it's been lovely to hear all of your thoughts. Um, and we're so grateful for your participation. Before we move into the book chats for the next month and the reading list for April, we realize that by the time we meet you, some of you will have finished your exams, you will have started your summer holidays, um, but you have a nice and big list of books that you can read. So we wanted to ask you, of the books that are on the list for April, what do you think you might enjoy reading? These are the covers of the books. I'll give you a minute to think about it. Please do post your responses on the chat box. We have responses coming in really fast. Tasmia who says Tiger Boy, Shayan who says Coop knows the scoop. Basha who says he's read crossover. Kirat Coop knows the scoop. Chavi who says the warden's daughter. Monica who says white fox. Abhina who says Tiger Boy again. Clearly these are the cows that are striking and standing out for you. Um, Coop knows the scoop in, indeed has quite a descriptive cover, very inviting. Um, there's Tiger Boy, there's White Fox, sure, and The Warden's Daughter. All these promise to be very interesting reads. Um, we read some of them ourselves, and we hope that you have a lot of fun discovering these books and discovering these readings. We're so glad that you were able to join us today. We hope that you have a great time with reading these books. We will see you for, and we hope that we will see you for our next book chat which is happening on April 16th at 6.30 p.m. with Jewel Parker Rhodes, who wrote the book, Ghost Boys. She'll discuss her ideas about the book, her writing process, um, and the context that surrounds the book and her reasons and her motivations for writing it. So we hope you will enjoy that session. Um, we really look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to interacting with you soon. In the meantime, stay safe, take care, happy reading. See you.